Welcome to the Peachtree Podcast. Peachtree Learning Center is a nonprofit in Middle Tennessee dedicated to training and discipling students in all the fine arts to become excellent and skilled in order to spread the kingdom of God into the world of the arts. On this podcast, we will discuss topics designed to encourage, uplift, educate, and equip people to proclaim the kingdom more deeply in their own families and communities. Welcome back as we start season three of our podcast. We've uh, resumed classes and lessons this week and are very excited to get to join you again uh, from this platform as well. Uh, We've talked already about our registration process and our fees for the year and how we change that schedule up. Uh, Last week, we addressed our calendar and talked about several different event dates that you'd like to be looking at and make sure you get on your calendars. And this week, we're going to talk a little more about our theme. Uh, We're going to have a special opportunity this year to um, plug into the theme in a new way than we've tried before for several reasons. Um, The medieval times are a a big chunk of history. And depending on the source you look at, they were anywhere from 500 to 1,000 years worth of recorded history. Everyone agrees that they started in the five to 700s. And then there's some kind of tapering off of that time period, if you will, somewhere between the 14 and 1600s as we entered the Renaissance phase. In that time frame, there are there is a tub of really good literature. And I'm talking about a range from picture books up to short chapter books up to Uh, really thick, heavy uh, historical fiction, and then even some nonfiction that's very worthwhile to read that talks about the that time period, because it was such a formative time of history. And there was a there was an acceptance of the supernatural, there was an acceptance of Christianity as a backbone for societies that were successful. There was an acceptance uh, of demonic activity and the fact that the Satan was real and there was real evil in the world and good and bad were very concrete concepts. And these are things that we haven't necessarily kept up in the last century as uh, for sure, as as well as they did. But those are things that really uh, make a bedrock for people to have successful family structure, successful societies as they live in their families and then interact as people. When you have a a bedrock of moral foundation and you can respect each other, but also know that you can count on a a level of behavior from each other that is at a minimum respectful and kind, um, it changes everyone's outlook when they go out of their doors. And um, you're talking about a time frame when people didn't have to be afraid to walk places everywhere. I mean, certainly there were pockets of areas that were different from that. But overall, in the Western world, you you didn't have to walk around in fear. And people traveled for miles and miles and miles alone on roads and encountered others and would walk along as friends. Uh, and you just didn't have to worry about those things. And a lot of that was due to the fact that Christianity had become such a pervasive influence in those cultures. And so we're going to be talking a lot about dragons and knights and stories and powerful overcoming of odds and that kind of thing. But there's also going to be some digging in on a deeper level for the older people who would like to jump into that. So I wanted to introduce the book challenge idea. We'll have about 50 titles or more on a list of books that can be, most of them will be available in our lobby library. I'm working to get all of them there, but some of them are a little bit hard to find cheaply. So, and we like to stock our library with donations or uh, finds at thrift stores and used bookstores. So we'll see how many of those we actually are able to source, but we already have quite a few of them in our lobby library Uh, in one or both buildings. And what we'll do is we'll rate those books on three different lists. We'll have a a level one reader uh, for for picture books and short stories. We'll have a level two for maybe books that are suited better for 11-year-olds and up. And that would include older teenagers, but they're at least suitable for 11 and up. And there'll be a little bit deeper books, a little bit thicker novels. And then we'll have a level three that's for 15 years and up. And those are books that either have possibly some objectionable materials, objectionable materials that you'd want to uh, kind of curate for your students. Um, and they would also be uh, no- nonfiction books that I mentioned, and then some just big, thick novels that are heavier and bigger and wider and deeper and harder to read. And this is not all material that was set or that is from this time period, but a lot of it is at least set in this time frame. So you'll you'll have an uh, opportunity to read about this time period on several different levels. And you could even do that as a family. I would strongly encourage that if your family could check out some picture books and then check out some deeper novel books, and uh, you could read those aloud as a family. Uh, and then if you've got some older teenagers and even young adults in your home who would like to understand more about that time period and the mindsets that went into that, uh, that level three list would be for you. And you could read those as well. And we'll have some prizes Uh, along the way for people who are finishing the reading challenge. So I think we're going to set goals for each of those levels of reading. If you dip down into the level below your age group, that's fine. You would just need to read more of those to count as one title, if that makes sense. Um, Just to 
make sure that the the playing field is as level as it can be. Um, but we'll have to, we'll have a, a reading challenge through the year. We'll have a probably a benchmarker at Christmas to see uh, kind of a status of, of where everybody is, and then we'll um, finish that up in the spring and have a time when we award prizes for people who accomplish that challenge. Alongside that challenge of just reading, what you'll do is when you've finished a title or two or three, you will have a small uh, form to fill out in the office, and um, it'll probably have one or two basic questions about the book. And then if you're a student, your parent will need to sign that. We'll need to make sure that the parent is verifying that you actually read the book. It's going to be largely on the honor system. There's no penalty or anything for not doing this. But we just wanted to find a way to encourage you to dig into this theme and understand this time period. Um, the study of history uh, can is something that can really inform who you are because of where man has been and mankind has come from. And knowing these strong Christian roots uh, go way back to the days of obviously of Christ and the strong Judeo-Christian foundation of this country, as well as other countries in the West can really help uh, ground you in what God expects of his people going forward. And so um, on every level, this can be a very profitable study. Um, Even if you're a teenager and you don't know the story of the reluctant dragon or the story of St. George and the dragon, you can check those picture books out of our library and read them just for fun and and still count them toward the challenge. They just wouldn't count as deeply as um, The Great and Terrible Quest, for example, or another one of those bigger books. Uh, So we'll have those uh, lists up on our website pretty soon. And then, of course, in our uh, office, We'll have those lists. We'll probably email them to to all of our families so you can take a look at them yourself at home and print them off and have them uh, available. And if you read books that aren't in our lobby library, as long as they're on the list, that's fine. If you have books outside the list that you'd like to know if they could be part of the list, that's also fine. Um, I'd need to approve those myself. So uh, just, you know, drop by the office or shoot us an email and say, this is a book we love. We already know about it's from this time period. We'd love to, we'd love to include this in our challenge. And that would, that would totally be acceptable. Um, and we're, we're very flexible this way, but we want it to be good books and good literature and thoughtfully written and not um, not too much just uh, character driven or set in a time period with Mickey Mouse. We're not trying to do that, but um, but things that are thoughtful and things that will just help you understand the mindsets that were behind this time frame would be very useful. And, and it would help your students in their classes, especially music and art and uh, drama. They're all going to be doing pieces and learning about uh, themes and learning about instrumentation and technique from those time periods and so reading about that time could also be very helpful in their classes it just helps them enjoy those uh, learning experiences on a deeper level so uh, we wanted to lay this out for you today and give you a, a framework to look at and be looking for those book lists to come out pretty soon hope you have a lovely day thank you so much for joining us today to support this podcast please go follow us on your podcast platform of choice and if you're interested in knowing more about the work of Peachtree please go visit our website at peachtreelearningcenter.com for more information